Hi everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the City and Guilds, uh, um, the City and Guilds course in Carpentry and Joinery. We're going to be talking about installing mouldings. Now the word mouldings is a word that's used for all sorts of timber products. Um, a moulding is something that instead of it just being square, it has a shape made onto it. That might be on like skirting, architrave, um, all the different types. So typically mouldings are made on a moulding machine. Now we talked about the spindle moulding machine much earlier in the course, and it's the spindle moulding machine that would be the device used for creating these beautifully shaped timbers. Of course, some of the timbers that you buy will be... Um, uh, made for you and some of them may be uh, things that you have to make for yourself but the main thing is that they're all called mouldings and we, 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 we think of a number of types of mouldings we think of skirting okay and we think of dado rail and we think of picture rail and we think of cornice and we think in terms of architrave and we also we don't we don't call them mouldings but there's a thing called a plinth block okay or or a, yes a plinth block so so architrave then typically is a molding it's it's timber that goes around a doorway isn't it and we all know what architrave is and we've talked about architrave in the past skirting is very similar to architrave except that instead of and then what architrave does is to close the gap between the door frame and the and the plaster it closes that gap and makes it look pretty and because obviously there's movement in timber but not in the wall so as the timber occurs so there's a constantly a crack so the architrave covers that crack the same with skirting what skirting does is to cover the crack between the wall and the floor because the wall is stationary and the floor is likely to be moving because timber always is moving so this um, makes a feature of the gap between the two okay a plinth block is a large, well not a large, but a larger piece of material than the skirting and larger than the architrave and uh, it goes in the junction between the skirting and the architrave, that's what a plinth block does. There's also corner blocks, they're the same as what we've just described except that they're up at the top of the door on each side and so instead of having a 45 degree mitre, there's a, they're cut off square and the little block is put it's a little pictorial feature that, that goes in the, in the corner there. Data rail is something that goes round at a three foot height, generally three foot. Uh, people have different heights, but generally up at the minute about three foot. Uh, they were originally invented to prevent doors, sorry, to, to prevent chairs from scratching walls. That's what they were for. So as the chair went near to the wall, it would touch the dado, but it wouldn't touch the actual beautiful paperwork. So. Uh, picture rail is a, a lovely thing. I love to see picture rail in the building. It's much higher up. It's usually at the height of, of the door height, the, the, the top of the door, and it goes right around the room. And typically it's designed, you have special little hooks that go onto the picture rail, and on the hooks are hung small chains or something like that, so the pictures can then be hung from the picture rail. And then, of course, there is the plate shelf. Now, the plate shelf is a beautiful little shelf, not very, not very wide, goes right around the top of the ceiling. And what people could do is they could put things onto the, onto the plate shelf, which was far out of reach, out of reach of people, but out of reach in particular of children. Uh, the cornice is the thing that actually attaches the ceiling to the wall. It's a, it's a feature that goes right around the top of the ceiling. So this is what these are all about. One of the most important things we need to talk about, we've talked about it already, but we'll talk about it again. A lot of these subjects, you know, are interrelated. And that's what it is like with carpentry. When you learn a particular skill, you find it relates not only to putting a roof on, it relates to putting the foundation in. That's how the thing goes. And uh, we talked about methods of transferring datums. Because a data rail goes in a certain height, but you don't want it to be going down or up and down all over. You want it to be exactly the same height all the way around. Now, there are at least four or five maybe different ways of setting a datum. I can think of a sixth. There's lots of them. There's probably even more still. The first one is the spirit level and a straight edge. OK, so you literally just put the mark on the wall, you put a spirit level on it, and then you put a straight edge on it and you take it right around the room that way. That's one way. The second way is the laser level. 
Okay, so what this is is a device that's set up and it, it throws a laser light all the way around the room so that you can actually put your material to the laser uh, light as it falls on the wall. The other one is an automatic level. Sometimes it's, it's called a dumpy level and it's a, a funny looking thing, not unlike the shape of this, except that thicker and you stand it on a, uh, a tripod and as you look down into it, so you get a perfectly level mark what that does <clears throat> is it puts a mark onto the wall and what you then would need to do is to take a small rule or a piece of timber to the wall mark where the line is on the wall on the on the level and then mark to where you want your data it might be up above or it might be down below and you then follow that line all the way around the room this is a little bit like surveying basically because the, the dumpy level is an automatic level and it is um like that and then of course we could use the water level now the water level is a very simple thing it's just a tube a tube of plastic and you put water in it and you fill it up in a certain way and when you hold the one end of the tube over there and the other end of the tube over there so you'll find that the water level will always come to be exactly the same on both sides another way is the chalk line okay so what you do is you'd measure up on one side and measure up on the other side and snap a chalk line across the wall and that would be absolutely dead straight. I use the stick method. <laughs> Very basic, isn't it? So I would just check the floor, make sure the floor is good. And then I literally would put the one end on a stick there and I'd come to this end with the same stick and mark it again, the same stick there, same. And that stick would go all around the room and it would give an actual perfect height all the way around the room. I think you'll find that my stick was a lot cheaper than buying a laser level. So, um, <clears throat> methods of jointing, scribing, and fixing mouldings. That's our next thing. The first one we're going to talk about is architraves. Now, we all know what an architrave looks like. I'm looking at one here at my door. An architrave is that piece of wood that covers the gap between a frame and the wall, the plaster. But it doesn't, it isn't set exactly at the edge of the door. It's set a little bit further back. It's called a quirk. It's set about five millimeters, about five millimeters is about right from the edge, five millimeters. And uh, that creates this um, trick of the eye whereby it looks as if it's right because it's got this it's set back a little bit. And that architrave then is set at five millimeters all the way around the frame. And I have a little device, another one, piece of wood, and I literally put it on, put my pencil on it and just run it up, put your pencil on it and write it down. And I have that little piece of wood always with me so a little piece but it just is a small device and it enables me to always get the mark exactly in the right place and then what do we do well we assemble the um the architrave the most important thing you need to remember is this and there's a little trick for you always put the head on first always so what i always do i'm right-handed so I always cut the left hand mitre and then I put it into place and with my right hand I mark where the second mitre is going to be and then I cut it and then I put it back into place and almost invariably when I'm doing work like this I use a little air nailer, just an air powered nailer and all I do is put it into place, get it exactly where I want it and just go choo, 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 and it pops the little pin straight in, they're three inch pins, go straight into them and they can hardly even be seen. So that's the header done. Some people say, why don't you start with the left-hand side and go over and come down? Well, there's lots sorts of reasons why that can go wrong. So I always do it this way. The next thing I'll do is I'll get um, an architrave and stand it by the side of it on the left-hand side. Mark the line, put a little tick on it, cut it with a saw, or cut it in whichever way I'm going to do it. I might, use a, I might use a chop saw or whatever, but I just cut it. And then what I do is before I put it into place, what I do is I put a little bit of PVA on the mitre and just bring the mitre in. And as the PVA splays out, I go choo, choo. So I nip the two together at the top. What the PVA does is prevents the, it prevents the, um, the, the, the architrave from opening up later. As the wood shrinks, we find the gaps appear. And then of course I'd go down, choo, 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 straight down the wall, and that would be the other one done. Shall I say it again? I go choo, choo, choo. <laughs> then what I do is go over onto the right hand side, exactly the same procedure, a little bit of glue, choo -choo, straight in, and uh, it's a very, very, very simple process, there's very little to this. <coughs> yeah. 
sometimes I have a little bit of putty with me, but I tell you a little trick. I very often have a little tube of toothpaste in my pocket. I say, what's that for, Stephen? It makes great filler. It's just it's just um, chalk, basically. It smells nice. It's for cleaning teeth. But you just take it out of your pocket, put a little bit on your finger, and choo -choo 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 down all the pieces. And that little bit of chalk, that toothpaste will dry, and it'll make great filler. And, of course, the great thing is it never goes off. It's, it's, it's very small. It sticks in your pocket. And whenever you need it, it's there. So there we are. Make sure that all those nails are well punched in. We don't want them to be on the surface. We want them to be below the surface. With my little air gun, it always puts them down below the surface by about two millimeters. So that's quite a good, quite a good depth. <clears throat> um, the other thing to bear in mind is if you're going to fit a corner block in a corner at the top, a corner at the top, you need to remember that it's well glued or even jointed. Because the timber does have a tendency to shrink a little bit as it gets older, and sometimes gaps appear. So we don't really want to be having that. So the whole idea of a, of a, of a corner block is that it's well fixed. I would always well glue it. That's what I do. Uh, and then the plinth block is the same. And the, the block is at the bottom of the door, bottom of the door frame, where the architrave comes onto the top of it, and the um, and the skirting comes onto the side. Very often they'll be they'll be jointed into the plinth block, and that stops any movement. Now, when you're using nails or adhesives, it's very important that you use fine pins or fine nails. Don't want to be splitting anything. If you've cut it and you've got it perfect, you don't want to be splitting it at a later date. One of the basic errors people have is to put chunky nails into architrave, and it looks absolutely horrendous. So that's something definitely to avoid. If you're using um, architrave that is MDF, then you'll need to be drilling those holes. They, they, MDF is like very thick cardboard. It will not give. It will not move away like wood does. It will not split, which is useful. But you'll need to be drilling small holes to enable you to get the pins to go in. They very often don't go through. Uh, off my air gun, they won't go through uh, into, into uh, architrave. Now, the other thing is that sometimes an architrave will be against a wall and the wall isn't perfectly straight. So sometimes it's important to scribe in the shape of the wall onto the side of the architrave. And this is a little bit of a trick. The most important thing you need to do is to move the architrave away from the wall sufficient so that you can see the shape going all the way up. And then you take a compass, for example, or a small piece of wood and you go up it according to the shape marking the timber as you go. What you then do is cut very carefully to that line or maybe even plain to that line and then you'll find that the architrave will fit in quite nice. Just remember that when the architrave goes back in it's got to still keep the five millimeter gap all the way down the architrave. So it's a little bit of a tricky thing to learn to do but it looks beautiful when it's done. <coughs> um, in fact, scribing, scribing to walls, and scribing to floors, or scribing to ceilings, they're all things to learn to do. They take a little bit of time. And it's one of the, it's one of the crafts of the carpenter to be able to do a very good um, um, seal uh, on a scribe. And very often in my kit, I'll have a little bit of uh, um, painter's cork. So what I can do is when I've fitted an architrave, if it isn't 100% perfect, what I'll do, I'll just take my cork and just go straight down it and they can paint to that and it seals it. And that's very, very good. You wouldn't want to be using anything other than the uh, decorator's cork because decorator's cork can take paint. It paint can paint over it. So that's why. And you don't want to have it much on it. You just want to have a very small bead. Just run it down quickly. Put your finger on it. Bring it down quickly and then clean your finger and you'll find but that's perfectly okay. Now we're going to talk about skirting next, but we're going to keep that for another video. So we look forward to seeing you then. Good. Have a great day. Catch up later. Bye for now. <clears throat>